What's going on guys? My name is Renegade. Today we're here for AKW class comparisons. Today we're going to be taking a look at Lightcaster versus Legion Doom Knight for soloing. Now both these classes are really really good at soloing, but there is a clear winner that I have decided on, so we will get into that a bit later. But before that, if you guys leave any suggestions for future class comparisons, then by all means leave those in the comment section down below. But yeah, so the class comparison this week will be focusing on the survivability first, and then we'll be talking about the speed at which these classes can solo. Now, what I did was I soloed Blood Titan for the purposes of this video. Blood Titan was a pretty easy choice for me because both these classes have strong survivability, but it it felt like you know it would be tested in a stronger uh, stronger boss that deals more damage. Now, this might not be the case for a lot of other soloing classes as they you might have like weaker heals, but both these classes do things that make the boss deal less damage overall, and they have pretty strong heals. So I, I decided to do Blood Titan. Now. What I noticed was both classes did something that made the enemy deal less damage. So what Legion Doom Knight did was its first ability called Touch of Doom, it stacks an effect that increases your damage, yes, but it also decreases the enemy's damage and by 3% per stack. That stacks up to 15 times, so it reduces the enemy's damage that deals to you by 45% uh, with full stacks of that. That's very useful for surviving the Blood Titan's Blood Rage. Blood Titan's Blood Rage, what it does is it it hits 450 to 500 between that sort of range um, on you for a short while, and uh, so you got to try and, try and find a way to survive that on most classes. And a lot of classes can't actually do that. But this little uh, little reduction here, this 45% reduction, does a lot to reduce the amount of damage you take during that stage, and it, as a result, it really does help out. Um, however, even with that, and even with it, the red blood type, with a Legion Doom Knight's strong heal, I did find myself getting quite low in HP, and, I, and you know, I was glad to see the Blood Titan's Blood Rage over. You know, I, if the Blood Titan hit that consistently, I don't think I'd be able to survive uh, soloing. But luckily, it didn't, and so as a result, you know, soloing was successful. But uh, Legion Doom Knight did lose HP, um, and uh, it, it did it did diminish in terms of its uh, ability to solo during that stage, but luckily, you know, Blood Rage is only a short amount of time. Um, but how the soul, how the heal works on Legion Doom Knight leads me to believe that I probably could survive that. What Soul Siphon does is it heals you when you attack using it. So uh, it, it's cooldown is 5 seconds and it heals you about 400 HP. However, the amount healed increases the lower your current HP. So as you get closer to 0 HP, the more it heals. And so it, it starts going up to like 500, 600, 700, 800 sort of range as you get lower on HP. So really, I don't think you'd really struggle that much. It just kind of seems like you're struggling, you know? When you see your HP is low, you think, shit, I'm struggling. But really, this uh, Soul Siphon heal, it's got, it's got you covered. It's got you covered in terms of its uh, its abilities to heal. Now, Lightcaster, on the other hand, like I said, it does also does something to reduce the amount of damage you take outside of its heal. Now... Its second ability called Light Blast, it has an effect called Blinded by Light, which decreases your opponent's chance to hit by 5% per stack. This lasts 12 seconds per stack, uh, sorry, 12 seconds if not restacked, and this maxes out at 5 stacks. So you can reduce your opponent's chance to hit by 25%. Now this actually was quite effective against the Blood Rage because with full stacks of this, you can make the Blood Rage miss one or two of the hits. That's quite quite powerful because Blood Rage has a finite amount of hits. You um, the Blood Rage only lasts a certain amount of time. So if you can make the Blood Rage Blood Rage less effective by simply making some of the hits not even hit you at all, then you've you've got to win there. And as a result, I did find Lightcaster surviving the Blood Rage uh, with with more HP to spare. I suppose you found yourself surviving with more HP left over, whereas. Uh, Legion Doom Knight sometimes got dangerously low, but as I said, Legion Doom Knight does have the lower HP, higher heal sort of thing going on. And of course, Lightcaster has a heal ability. Um, this heal ability has 12 seconds on uh, on its cooldown, and it heals about double, slightly more than double Legion Doom Knight's amount, and it's got slightly more than double on its cooldown. So, hey, you've actually got a pretty nice balance of, uh, of power there in terms of survivability. However, Illuminate, which is the name of Lightcaster's heal, also applies an effect which increases your dodge chance and de uh, increases your damage resistance by 15%. So uh, that that actually uh, that actually makes Lightcaster quite good as well. Um, you've also got an effect on your passives called Speed of Light, which increases your haste on uh, on Lightcaster. So all the cooldowns that are advertised are actually slightly 
slightly less it's actually 15 percent less than what they say they are so that makes it a uh, makes it actually loopable for the haste and damage resistance so it's actually uh it's quite a quite a strong heal ability there um, however in practice both these classes are very very good at survivability and it's it's really kind of hard to call a winner here um, it would take a lot more 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 uh, more in-depth uh, research but it's safe to say here, in most situations, these both these classes are going to be pretty even in terms of its survivability. And at the end of the day, in soloing an AKW, most bosses don't actually pose a challenge in terms of the damage they do. Most people are just looking for a class that can solo quickly, and that's what we're going to get into now. So, the speed at which these classes fight, the, the, the one that everyone's been waiting for. Legion Doom Knight could solo Blood Titan with an average time over, you know, I got three times and divided them, you know, by three, and so I got an average time of 117 seconds with Legion Doom Knight, and with Lightcaster, I got an average time of 98 seconds, so a 19 second difference. However, you must remember, Lightcaster has an effect on its first ability called uh, In the Spotlight, and this first ability has four second cooldown, by the way, and that's going to be important. In the Spotlight, Increases the amount of damage your opponent takes by 3% per, stacks, per stack and lasts 10 seconds if not restacked, and then that stacks 50 times. So you can loop that over and over and over and over again up to 50 times to get a possible 150% damage increase. Now, 4 seconds times 50 is, of course, 200 seconds. So you'd have to take you 200 t seconds to get full stacks of that, and uh, 98 seconds was the time to solo for Lightcaster. So... I actually only had about half the stacks, and it was still posing a uh, a a really quite a quite a significant lead on a, on Legion Doom Knight's time, and that time uh, difference is going to get even even more uh, noticeable as you solo bosses with higher amounts of HP, and uh, so my conclusion here is that Lightcaster deals more damage than Legion Doom Knight in pretty much every situation. Lightcaster has a nuke ability at the end, and all the other abilities in the class that deal damage deal just, they deal pretty decent damage. Light Blast, an ability I mentioned earlier, which applies the effect that reduces your opponent's chance to hit, that deals significant damage. And then of course, like I said, it has a nuke ability called Burned by Light, which can hit really high. That heals, that hits often up to like 9, 10k sort of thing. And you know, with full stacks, you know, 12k, 13k sort of thing. So you really get some really nice crits uh, with that ability. And, uh, you know, like I said, with Light Blast, you also get some good crits too. Legion Doom Knight, the damage isn't bad. It has a similar similar system where you apply your first ability called Touch of Doom. It increases the damage that your opponent takes by 3%, and that stacks of 15. So, it's not not bad, but it's nothing nothing compared to Lightcaster's 150% damage increase. But, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's um, not, not going to be too different in terms of the damage they, uh, they do in... And smaller, smaller health boss fights, but you know, Lightcaster does deal more damage. An interesting metric I got was I got the Blood Titan's total HP divided that by the amount of seconds it took to solo, and I got a damage per second average for each class. So Legion Doom Knight's damage per second was 1,679, and Lightcaster's was 2,004. So you know, you do have a, a higher damage per second on Lightcaster. So I am going to give Lightcaster the win here. Lightcaster, I do feel, is a better soloing class than Legion Doom Knight. If you guys found this video helpful and you enjoyed, then by all means leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this in the future, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, just a side note, at the end of the video here, I'd just like to quickly ask you guys to leave your thoughts on the format and the way I've been doing class comparisons so far. I've decided not to do the things on the side of the screen. I feel as though they were quite useless, and looking back on my videos, they really didn't pose, and they really didn't, I'm um, sorry, they didn't pose, them. that's weird, they really didn't actually give you much useful information, I felt, um, and I'd rather just be clear and concise with what I'm saying, and uh, give you guys hard-hitting evidence, and put more time into the research, and uh, the actual facts with these videos, rather than putting time into making flashy overlays that make the video look slightly more visually appealing. I intend for these videos to be more of like a listening experience rather than a viewing experience and the the bars on the sides of the screen if you do go back and look at them they really don't give you much useful information so I won't be doing those unless you guys really really want them someone did mention that they they missed them but I mean it wasn't it's not a big deal in my opinion but if you guys really want them then leave that in the comment section down below peace guys